Oh, this is Fargo. Okay. Yep. So, uh, in North Dakota, are you familiar with this guy? Yeah, actually, if you go down Broadway in Fargo, he just has a studio on uh, Main Street. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I, knew, I didn't really know his views when I actually lived there. You probably could have guessed. So, um, Fargo-based uh, host Scott Hennon, one of Matt's favorite radio hosts. Uh, Let's kick back listen to some Hennon. <laughs> <laughs> um, talks about the... Um, a, the a GOP Secretary of State candidate, what's the guy's name? Will Gardner? Yep. And uh, how he is being um, completely, um, uh, I guess he's being, uh, well, he's, he's dropped since, out of the race Since now. dropped out so of the race. The story with him is basically he challenged this guy who's been, the, uh, Al Yeager, who's been in that position since 1993 and sort of a n- normal Republican, not crazy person. He challenged him in the primary and beat him. And then after he beat him, it came out that he had a 2006 charge for, uh, well, we'll get to it here. Yeah, okay. So here's the story. So he beats the establishment Republican, uh, and the establishment Republican, Yeager, is going to run as an independent. Um, But the Republican candidate was, up until uh, I think the last 24 hours, this guy, Will Gardner. And it came out that um, he had been cited for peeping into uh, numerous windows, numerous windows, at a North Dakota State University freshman female dorm. Got to see what's going on. Now, this guy was not in college at the time, right? No, he was 29. He was 29. And had a family. He had a family, but he could be going out at night on North Dakota's uh, state's uh, campus Campus. just to check it out. Figure out what the hell's going on. And he said it was a one-time mistake. <laughs> one-time mistake. I love the one-time mistake line. <laughs> like, as if like, it was just, just one time. I was a grown man. And I just, a freshman door, but never again. I mean, obviously, I, was like, I wouldn't do anything like that multiple times. No. I, it was just like a one-off. It was one of those things like you're watching TV. You're like, hey, wait a second. What would that be like? You go, I didn't like it. And you're done. You're done. You're done. Um, so here is... Uh, Scott Hennon. I, I can just give a bit more detail on the actual story. So basically, some campus security saw him standing by a dorm room, <laughs> dorm building. And so they called the police. The police get there, and the guy is still seen there. I can read from the uh, police department here. Um, uh, Officer Berg and I arrived along from Officer Sandin. Before we even entered the parking lot, I could see a silver van parked and idling. And I saw a white... Oh, wait, wait, wait. He drove his van there? He drove a van there. And he left it idling. Left it idling. Which is a weird thing to do if you're parking and have something else to do on the campus. But just like the van and creepy activity thing, he's really hitting his marks here. Yeah, and apparently when they got back to the van after they uh, talked to him, like, why are you going to... So basically, let me start at the beginning. So the cops get there, see him standing next to the building, looking in windows. He gets spooked but doesn't see them uh, immediately, but he, like, sort of bends down like he's tying his shoe next to the building. I'm just over here tying my shoe. Uh, and then moves. they see him move to another window. And so they go up to him and ask him uh, what he's up to. And basically, he goes back. They bring him back to his van. His belt and his wallet are on the passenger seat of the van. One time. So, yeah. <laughs> it would be so great if he... I want him to have, like, a ricky bobby response from that or not ricky bobby for that, that uh that show on hbo it's like what, what does it look like i'm doing man here's here's from checking the, police, the situation the, out the police report officer berg approached me and told me that his belt and wallet were laying in plain view on the front seat of the van she also indicated that his pants were unzipped and that his shirt oh. front was pulled out oh. uh, when i asked him about the condition of his clothing he said he had just come from work exactly. but was not willing to tell us where he worked he works at the um <laughs> that that place where you can't have belts because <laughs> it's too dangerous to pull your shirt through your fly. Yeah, exactly. That place, it's dress code. <laughs> I work at uh, Shirts Through Flies R Us. <laughs> All oh, right. I was just coming from work. Everything, <laughs> no belts. That's where we just sell uh, suspenders. And uh, they don't let the employees wear belts. Hey, look, you can walk away from this situation or I could find you. <laughs> All right, so here is Fargo-based radio host Scott Hennon actually... Flacking for this guy. 
What we saw in the paper on Friday doesn't define one man. It's a mistake. And uh, I was out and about this weekend, a lot of different grad parties and things, and I heard you know people chattering about this. And uh, I'll give you the two extremes. I heard the one folk, uh, one group of folks say, um, um, you know, I blame the girl in this dorm. What is the what are the drapes doing open? What is I mean that's that's what is she thinking? What is, what is was that intended? Is, is she trying to lure somebody in to watch? Or what you know that was one extreme. Pause I it. Heard, pause it. Let's just uh, talk about those people in North Dakota, Matt, who. Who think that freshman um, uh, girls have the ability to actually lure a 29-year-old who is at home with their family off campus can lure them just by the ability of just their their uh, nudity or partial nudity existing. Well, it's like it's like Matt always says to me when he talks about Haddon. He's just like, you know, it's controversial, but he's got a viewpoint. <laughs> That's one extreme. Let's hear the other uh, thing that people are saying at parties in Fargo. <laughs> Watch what you know. That was one extreme. I heard another from someone said he was married with two kids. Oh, I could never vote for someone that did that. Pause it now. Apparently, there's no one in North Dakota, in Fargo at least, to be fair, who thinks it's a problem for single 29-year-old men to be walking around peeping Tom. And uh, 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 around. Well, else he's supposed to meet women. <laughs> Jesus. Around freshman dorms. Yeah. yeah, North Dakota's got quite a diversity of thought on this. Uh, there's there's two viewpoints on this. One, they're whores. Uh, two, uh, they're whores, but you shouldn't do that if you're married. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's continue. Just go back a little bit so we can hear how you know. You you, you gotta you really you can't judge a man by the fact that he would do something like this. Two kids. Oh, I could never vote for someone that did that. Never. Hmm. So you only vote for perfect people. <laughs> <laughs> You'll now never pause vote it. again. Hold on, I want you to, hold on. I want we're going to go, we'll go back <laughs> over this. But I want you to be aware that the first person who said to him, maybe these girls, it's their fault. They're trying to lure people in to watch them uh, get dressed, these, uh, these grown-ups to try and come on campus and get dressed. Notice that the radio host does not have a retort for that person. <laughs> he just comes back with the contrarian position for the one who says that he's married. And he does the married voice, like, they're married. Like, how can they never vote for someone like that? I never vote for a married man in a gifted belt buckle and stared at 18-year-old girls through a window. I'm a moral perfectionist. You should be single if you're going to masturbate to women through the window. <laughs> I won't vote because he's not perfect. He would have been perfect if he was single. Oh, I guess we should all be without sin and perfect at all times. Like none of us has ever jerked off in front of an 18-year-old by her window when he's in her first week of college. Wow. Well, lucky freaking die. Well, there are two dorms, uh, <laughs> girls' dorms on NDSU campus called Sil and Charybdis. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so go back. Go back and just play it. Oh, man. Hennon's on a roll. He was married with two kids. Oh, I could never vote for someone that did that. Never. Hmm. Hmm. So you only vote for perfect people. <laughs> You'll never vote again. If all you plan to do is vote for perfect people. If Pause. you're honest. In North Dakota, a. if you refuse to vote, for peeping toms who <laughs> masturbate and, uh, it, it, uh, but while looking at uh, freshman girls on uh, college, you're never going to have anyone to vote for again. Yeah. Might as well just opt out of democracy, man. Because that's why you know I, what? No fallen human's ever going to meet your exacting standards. That's why. Not I, jerking off in front of a freshman girl dorm and then saying, why don't you have your belt off while I'm coming from work? That's, that's your <laughs> standards? Well, guess what? Might as well just not step out of your house no more and interact with the rest of us because you're just operating on a totally exalted plane. And ladies and gentlemen, that is why <laughs> if you have the ability to bet on this race, Heidi Heitkamp will win. 
because everyone else will <laughs> Actually, not be voting. Actually, Kramer called uh, Gardner a good man that if he was upfront about this uh, this story, um, they might have he might have still been the nominee. <laughs> like Roy, Roy Moore's like that's hey. not going to help. You know, Heidi Heitkamp also, I should just add, uh, received a huge donation from Americans for Prosperity, the Koch brothers thing, for uh, her vote on the tax cuts. Oh, I thought you were going to say she was found with her panties <laughs> around her ankles in front of a freshman man's door. By the way, there's also another <laughs> act no one's perfect. clip. We have a bit more. What, there's more? There's more. It goes in a completely different direction, actually. I want to hear more hands. Some interesting hooked. logic from oh, our friend. Okay, here we go. I'm hooked. For up. perfect people, if you're honest. We know what we know about Will Gardner. His opponent is a Democratic candidate who is openly gay. Oh! <laughs> That's not a crime. <laughs> and more and more... Hold on, wait, can we, can, we, can we rewind that? Wait, is it not? Is being openly gay not a crime in it's, North Dakota? It's legal in North Dakota. Oh, my God. I thought we were not attacking people for not being perfect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We know what we know about Will Gardner. His opponent is a Democratic candidate who is openly gay. Are you anything gay? That's not a crime. And more and more, it is celebrated by the culture and society. I have a gay family member, but I don't celebrate it. God, I pray for it. It's what I do, because I know that just like people who in the a heterosexual relationship that decide to have a sexual relationship outside of marriage, it's a sin. Mm. Wait, what? Wait, I, now I'm just, So he's I'm against gay people because now. they have marriage out, or sex outside of marriage. No, he's equating gay people with Having the sin any of sex. adultery. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Don't hate the sinner, hate the but sin. Yet, it's not but the gayness, it's the adultery. Ago, being married and... Being a, and jerking off outside of a freshman girls' dorm is a sign of perfectionism. If you oppose that, all right, I got it now. I see what he's doing. And the only people I, just I see what say, he's doing. People he's not, not even good at this. In this scenario, are the eighteen-year-old women. Look, this is very difficult to do. So I I can okay. appreciate why he's having difficulty. But what he's trying to do is, he's trying to say that the reason why what Gardner did was wrong was because he was married. Right. What he was doing was sexually relieving himself right. outside of his marriage. That's right. So he's a sinner. Yes. But this other guy is a sinner, too, because he's gay. Right, of course. So equal, equal. And that's why at the end he's saying the adultery thing. Right. Because he's saying what Gardner's guilty of is not being a peeping Tom and a public masturbator. No, because the girls asked for that. It, because the girls... Yeah, I mean, I mean they lured they him wanted. in. Jury's out. Well, but mm, they're saying no. Jury doesn't seem that out. Actually, law enforcement seems to be done with this case. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, the jury's out. <laughs> <laughs> so the lesson to learn from this, and l let this be the final word: when you do your peeping tom, go around do it to your own wife. That's probably actually it could be hot. Just make sure the kids are asleep. <laughs> What like, hey, honey, <laughs> mom. Yeah, I think that's a good question. Can you walk around without a belt and your your shirt through, uh, tucked through your fly in your backyard? Your yeah, in your backyard, like, sure. You can. Todd, we can't stop with the goddamn raincoat. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to have dinner together.